Okay, good evening, everybody. And uh, welcome to the Well Room. Some of you might know, remember it as the Rocket Room, but uh, I'm glad you found your way here because it's, uh, especially in the wintertime, it's a little bit complicated. Um, my name is Jim Payne. I'm hosting the first half of this program, and I'd really like to just welcome you all here uh, tonight for a Good as a Concert. It's uh, our latest event. We've, uh, we had the misfortune of starting up this organization uh, just a couple of months before COVID hit, really, so... Uh, it's kind of gotten in the way ever, ever since. But we're really uh, particularly pleased about the, tonight's event because the reason we sort of got this whole thing going, the good as a concert thing going in the first place, was because we felt that, uh, you know, that there wasn't big enough attention paid to a lot of the old traditional songs. There's lots of, you hear lots of instrumental traditional music, lots of drinking songs, pub songs, and so on, but we felt there was a, a bit of a lack of a lot of the old ballads. So that's why we... Uh, we started to put off uh, a series of these events. And tonight, in, in particular, uh, we're doing it because uh, we're, we have a, a partnership going uh, with the Research uh, Center for the Study of Music, Media, and Place at the university. And uh, they've just uh, launched a website based on the collections of uh, McEdward Leach, the folk songs of Atlantic Canada. And uh, we thought that was something really worth celebrating because one of the things that we've often found, and certainly over the course of my you know, musical career over the past few decades, I hear a lot about people saying they can't really, you know, they have a hard time finding a lot of the old songs because some of them are in collections that have gone out of print uh, years ago, so don't, sometimes they're hard to find. This website is, is, is quite, a, quite a treat, really, to have it up online, accessible, free, open to the general public. So, uh, you know, next time somebody asks you to, to sing, you, there's no point in saying, you, you, you know, you don't know any songs. There's lots of places now you can, you can find the songs. Uh, before we get started with the music, however, I want to uh, bring up a couple of the people who've been uh, really crucial to establishing this, this website uh, from uh, MMAP. Uh, Dr. Harris Ann Berger, who's the, uh, the director of, uh, of MMAP at the moment, and Dr. Megan Forsythe, who is no longer with MMAP, uh, who is now an assistant professor of music at the university, but uh, I've worked with both of these people uh, quite extensively, really, over the past few years on a variety of projects that, that kind of not just further the aims of MMAP, but also further the aims of those of us who are really into the traditional music of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, all right, so without further ado, I'm going to bring up uh, folks uh, to the stage here. We've set this up tonight really so that it, it kind of uh, operates like one of the folk festival uh, song sessions or something. So we're just all going to sit across the stage here, trade songs back and forth, uh, you know, talk about the songs. Uh, I won't uh, go into lengthy introductions of the performers uh, because I'm expecting them to talk a little bit about themselves and how they got into uh, the whole song traditions in, in the first place. Uh, I'm going to get the two people on either side of my center seat here uh, first because we got the other two guys on the ends because they have long necks. <laughs> I mean, a guitar and a banjo I'm talking about here. Uh, so, uh, Ginny, why don't you come up first? Ginny Ryan, and most of them, of course, if you've... You know, if you've heard uh, a lot of these uh, of a cappella song sessions, you're probably familiar with their work anyway. Welcome Ginny Ryan to the stage. Ellen Power, where's Ellen? Okay, Ellen's over here. And then on the other side of Ellen is going to be Fergus O'Byrne, who uh, hardly needs a microphone. <laughs> and especially for the banjo. <laughs> and uh, the great Matthew Byrne is going to join us over here as well. The songs that I'm going to sing are, of course, from the collection, but three of them I knew from, from previous uh, collection, collecting experiences of my own. I'm originally from the States, but I came here because I've got a great-grandmother born in St. Pierre, and I came to visit her grave and everything, and ended up loving the place and collecting songs down on the Cape Shore. And so anything else I sing after this first song will be things that I learned from people on the Cape Shore, but that also uh, appear in Mick Edward Leach's collection. But this first one, uh, Thomas and Nancy, is, I tried to get it directly from the website, and it was wonderful because the, the, the sound was crystal clear. Uh, I did mi mix up, the, I did change the words a little bit at the end. I used Genevieve Lear's Come and I Will Sing You for the last uh, uh, verse because it made more sense to me. <laughs> but I think that's okay. I, that, that's always happening with folk songs anyway. So this is Thomas and Nancy. And could you please give me an A? Yeah. 
Okay. A boatswain's loud whistle had sounded, caused Thomas and Nancy to part. On the beach where they stood broken hearted, while the tears from her blue eyes did start. Said Nancy to Thomas, when you're sailing, when you're sailing far over the main, think on the last words I have told you. And remember, my dear, you are mine. So they kissed and shook hands and they parted. Thomas leaped in his boat from the shore. As Thomas lay on his soft pillow, thought of Nancy and his parents at home. The night roared with loud claps of thunder. The lightning swept over the foam. The rocks ripped our good ship asunder. And the crew faced a watery tomb. As Nancy was walking and abiding, to the place where they had walked before. She saw the cold corpse of her Thomas all floating along by the shore. She kissed his cold lips to her sorrow and loud told the depth of her grief. Before the sun set on the morrow, young Nancy would have her relief. Next day there were two loyal lovers, cut down in the prime of their bloom. It's been said that they loved one another and were buried both into one tomb. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you're going to hear a lot more happy songs like that before this night is out. figured now it's been such a cheerful three years we're going to try to bring it <laughs> exactly <back. laughs> um, <clears throat> well I'm delighted to be asked to be part of this thank you so much for having me and, and uh, like like a lot of like all of us up here I've delved into the to the leech collection um, and in some cases or in many cases actually I've I've gotten songs from other places and then realized that they were also in the leech collection or variations were also in the leech collection and and uh, <clears throat> And so uh, I think that's the case with, uh, with all of the ones that I was thinking of singing tonight. This one I recorded with, uh, with the Dardanelles on an album in 2011, which we call The Eastern Light. And that song, The Eastern Light, um, originally I was, well, it was originally my, my brother was singing it, and I kind of stole it from him. And uh, <clears throat> he got it from, he borrowed a tape recording from, uh, from Will Fuerm of uh, a bunch of unaccompanied uh, recordings of uh, the singing of Henry Young uh, of Grey River. And, uh, and he learned some great songs off of that tape recording, and, and, uh, and this was one of them. And um, Henry Young is the father of uh, Craig Young, the, the, uh, the, the best flat picker in, uh, <coughs> in, uh, in Newfoundland, or certainly one of them anyway. Um, <clears throat> and so... Uh, the Eastern Light is one, it's a, it's a seafaring song, it's a ship called the Eastern Light, about a ship called the Eastern Light that sailed up from Gloucester, Massachusetts in the 1870s, and uh, it's one of those uh, seafaring uh, songs, ballads, where uh, nobody dies. I think there's five of those. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> and 
I, I, I love singing it the way I originally learned it, but of course all of the ones that uh, on that recording were a cappella. We did an, a, you know, an, an, an instrumentalized arrangement of it, but, uh, but I love singing it the way that I learned it, which is, uh, which is unaccompanied. And uh, so I'll see if I got it all here now. I haven't, haven't sung it in a while. <clears throat> It's of my sad misfortune in the year of 73 I stepped on board a fishing ship all off of a drunken spree Her name it was the Eastern Light as you might understand we were bound down on a salt sea trip to the banks of Newfoundland. T'was Saturday being the first of March when we left Gloucester Port. The girls all wove their handkerchiefs as we sailed down the shore. We had a jar of rum on board and gathered round our crew. And we drank our health to those Gloucester girls who were bidding us adieu. It's early in the morning, boys. Our cook, he gives the call. Get out and get your breakfast, boys, and out to haul your trawl. You've scarce got time to light your pipe when your dory she do go. And you have to make three runs a day, no matter how hard it blows. We fished around them foggy banks for the space of 17 days. We boarded a couple of Frenchmen, but no brandy could we raise. The halibut, they being kind of scarce, we run our codfish gear. And our skipper, he swore we would fill her up if it took us half a year. We fished around them foggy banks when the skipper he loud did shout, Come hoist aboard your dories, boys, and break your anchor out. And hoist up our big mainsail, and we will get her under way. Provisions, they are getting kind of scarce, and we can no longer stay. And now our anchor is on our bow, and we are homeward bound. It's when we get to Gloucester Port, we'll pass a glass all around. We'll go down to Johnny McLeodie's and we'll have a happy night. And drink a health to those Gloucester girls and success to the Eastern Light. The Eastern Light, thank you. Um, uh, I'd say also that song, by the way, is, uh, is on a, a CD that was, you've heard uh, Beverly Diamond's accomplishments lauded here earlier on tonight around the McEdward Leach website. But Bev produced a CD called Time for Another One, it wasn't the South Coast that concentrated on a, a lot of the uh, songs from the South Coast. And I think it's over there on the table, actually, just a little commercial plug there. But it's, uh, it's, it's part of the MMAP Back on Track uh, series which uh, really sort of, you know, digs into a lot of the, the sort of more folkloric aspects of some of, these, some of these songs. A lot of great songs from the South Coast. So, uh, Ellen, how are you doing? Good, good. I'm ready to sing. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I also had a, a little poke to the uh, McEdward Leach website, and there's a lot of, you know, you start and you're like, I'm just going to take a little peek, and then it's two hours later, and you're like dehydrated. And you <laughs> 
<laughs> you've just been scrolling through. It's super cool. Um, but one of the ones that first spoke to me was I was scrolling on and I saw one that said The Old Blackbird and I clicked on it to, to hear the music and it was a fairly common song that I know is just The Blackbird but it was actually for me one of the first songs that I learned and it's interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, for, for me it was interesting because um, it's one of the first songs I actually remember learning, I've been singing since, according to family lore, since before I could speak. But I actually remember this one because my mother sang it to me as a bedtime song when I was about five. And I rolled over and said, can I learn that one? She's like, yes, we go to sleep now. <laughs> so I sang it a lot when I was a kid because it's the sort of song that's really cute to hear a little girl sing. And as a matter of fact, I sang it so much that for a while I didn't sing it at all because I, I grew to dislike it. But what I really liked when I found the recording on the McEdward Leach website is that it was actually sung, not like most of them, which were sung by older people in the community, but it was actually sung by a 12-year-old girl named Joanna O'Brien. And I like this because, again, I was that 12-year-old that girl, and I could just imagine someone saying, now, Joanna, now she knows a few. Look, you get up here, Joanna. You sing for the man. You sing him. And if you listen to the recording, she's just loud and strong. Doesn't even stop between verses. Like, she's confident. And so I suppose if she was alive now, she'd be about 83. So if you know a Joanna from Cape Royal, like, let me know. I'd love to meet her. So this is the Blackbird. And it has a chorus, which I'm sure you'll catch on to, so feel free to sing along. <clears throat> I am a young maiden, my story is sad. For once I was courted by a young sailor lad. He courted me dearly by night and by day. Until this young sailor, he sailed miles away. If I was a blackbird, could whistle and sing, I'd follow the ship that my true love sails in. And in the top rigging, I'd there build my nest, and I'd pillow my head on my fair lover's chest. He promised to take me to Donnybrook Fair, and buy me fine ribbons to tie up my hair. I know that someday he'll come back o'er the tide, and someday he'll make me his own loving bride. If I was a blackbird, could whistle and sing, I'd follow the ship that my true love sails in. And in the top rigging, I'd there build my nest, and I'd pillow my head on my fair lover's chest. My parents, they chide me and will not agree that me and my sailor love married should be. But let them deride me and say what they will. While there's breath in my body, he's the one I love still. If I, I was a blackbird, could whistle and sing, and sing, I'd follow the ship that my true love sails in. And in the top rigging, I'd there build my nest, and I'd pillow my head on my fair lover's chest. If I was a scholar, could handle a pen, long secret love letters to my true love I'd send. I'd tell him my sorrows, my griefs and my woes. If I could but find him, I'd crown him with gold. If I, I was a blackbird, could whistle and, and sing, I'd follow the ship that my true love sails in. And in the top rigging, I'd there build my nest, and I'd pillow my head on my fair lover's chest.
Thank you. Uh, when I was started singing folk songs, and I started looking at folk songs when I was a teenager in, in Dublin, uh, you know, you always had cassette tapes around and stuff like that. Hello, that's not for me, I hope. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, and, and I, I had this collection of songs by this fellow by the name of Tim Lyons, who was a, an Irish singer, a traditional singer. And there were a bunch of songs, and this particular song was on that tape. And uh, I came to Newfoundland, not really not knowing with Dennis and Dermot at the time, not knowing the, the extent of the music that was here and the, and the songs that were here. <coughs> and uh, we were doing a gig down, in, uh, down in, uh, in, in, on the Bayward Peninsula, down in Fleur de Lis. And uh, next morning, we were having breakfast at the place we were staying. And there, were, there was a fellow on this side of me singing a song to me. And this side singing the song to me, just excited to have us around and, and singing songs to us. And lo and behold, one of them started singing this particular song that Tim Lyons had sung. And then when I was going through the collection, just uh, looking for songs to sing, I came across the song again. And uh, it's, uh, it's a song called The Waterford Boys. It's uh, about uh, a fellow coming over and... Uh, Looking for lodgings and food, and this is what happens to him. <clears throat> for fun and diversion we have met together, I tell you, from Waterford hither we came. We crossed the broad ocean in dark stormy weather. Our hearts, they were light and our pockets the same. Sad at leaving old Ireland when once more on the dry land, on the roadside a tavern I chanced for to spy. My hearts they were light, my pockets, my felt in my pockets, I felt, and for the price of a drink, I was mortally dry. In the tavern I rolled, in the landlord he strolled, good morrow, says he, and says I, if you please, will you bring me some bread, will you give me a bed, and then bring me some bread, and a bottle of porter, and a small piece of cheese. My bread and cheese ended, I then condescended to seek my repose, so I bid him good night. <coughs> and under the clothes I was trying to doze, I first stuck me toes and I drew out the light. For we are the boys with the fall of all eloquence, dancing and laughing and all other joys. For ructions, destructions, diversions and divilment, who's to compare with the Waterford boys? Well, I wasn't long sleeping when I heard something creeping and gnawing and chawing around the bedpost. My breath I suspended, but the noise never ended. Thinks I, you have damnable claws for a ghost. I feel very lazy, I felt very lazy. Once more I popped me head from under the clothes. You're a Jesus, what's that? What a great big jack rat. With one leap from the floor he came up to me nose. Well, I grabbed me me hobnail and I made him a bobtail. I wrestled with rats till the clear light of day. In the landlord he came and he says with a grin, for your bed and supper you five shillings to pay. Five shillings for what? Now don't be disgracing yourself, says I, you're a rogue if you please. I can't sleep with these rats, you've the devil's own fault to charge me five shillings for dry bread and cheese. For we are the boys with the fall of all eloquence, laughing and dancing and all other joys. For ructions, destructions, diversions and divilment, who's to compare with the Waterford boys? Well, the landlord went rarding and leaping and tearing. He jumped through the window and he broke down the door. When he could get no further, he roared me with murder. These rats, they are eating me out by the score. They sleep in me stable, they eat from me table. They wrestle me dogs and they've killed all me cats. Well, in truth, and says I, if you'll give me back them five shillings, I'll tell you the way to get rid of them rats. Well, I will, then, says he, says I invite them to supper and dry bread and cheese placed before them for sure. Never mind if they're willing, just charge them five shillings and bad luck to the rats, will you ever see more? 
for we are the boys with the fall of all eloquence, laughing and dancing and all other joys, for auctions, diversions, and versions, and divilment. Who's to compare with the Waterford boys? <laughs> Thank you. One of the things I noticed about this website, by the way, is that, you know, going down through the list of titles, there are quite a number of familiar songs there, really. A lot of them that, uh, uh, you know, some versions of the songs that were collected in the Gerald S. Doyle songbooks and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to throw in a song here now before we do another round with the, the four that's on the stage with me here. Uh, this is ostensibly a love song, but it's really about a fight between a townie and a bayman. Uh, I grew up on the western side of Notre Dame Bay, never heard the words townies and baymen until I came to St. John's. Although I, I have played in Florida Lee a few times, and, and they're kind of like that down there, like you were saying. Uh, I used to play in a pub in Bay Vert uh, years ago when they used to have regular music there, and the crowd from Florida Lee used to rent the van to come up, and they wouldn't go home again until I went with them. And, and on the weekends especially, and you go down, you'd be up all night singing songs in Florida Lee, but Florida Lee shows up in a lot of the, the published song collections, actually, not, you know, Leach, uh, Greenleaf, Mansfield, a bunch of the very early collections, too, have a number of songs from Fleur de Lis. This is a song called Fanny's Harbor Bon. And Fanny's Harbor was a fishing station on the, on the, the southern, uh, southern coast of Labrador that uh, a lot of uh, Newfoundland fishermen used to frequent years ago. Uh, but in this case, it's about, a, it's about a, like I say, a racket that happens between the townie and the bayman. But just a, a hint here, the townie is not from St. John's. It just goes to show how everybody, I guess, needs to feel like, you know, they have somebody to kick underneath them. Because in this case, the townie is from Carbonair. <laughs> and uh, the bayman was from Tickle Cove. So, uh, but it goes like this. Yeah. As I roved out one evening fair in the lovely month of May, those Vardy hills I rambled to view the distant bay. The craft were flocking down the shore, and pleasant was the day, when to my surprise a pair I spied, which caused me to delay. Twas there I spied a young man embracing fondly the charms of a fair one that once was loved by me. My heart with jealous notions felt eagerly the wrong which caused this dreadful conflict on Fanny's harbor bond. I then addressed this young man and unto him did say, Are you from Bonavista or are you from that bay? I see you are a northern man, a bayman, I presume. So I pray be gone all from the barn, or I'll boot you in your bloom. He quickly made answer, and unto me did say, I'm not from Bonavista, but I am from that bay. I do reside where storm and tide have swept down buildings strong. Here in full glee from T and C to meet you on the bond. He stood not hesitating, but struck immediately. This damsel mild stood like a child to witness the affray. 
A pain then in my chest he rose Before it was too long My person punched, my darling took From Fanny's harbor bond He skinned my nose down o'er my face As I instantly did rise and then unto my regal brow he joined a bunch of fives which lay me there prostrated quite lifeless on the barn and when I came to my senses this bayman he was gone now when you meet with northern men, you'll think them somewhat green. You'll look on them with hate and scorn as unfit to be seen. You'll treat them and rebuke them all with a scolding tongue. But when you enrage in a fight, engage from a babe and you will run. <laughs> I will not fail to tell the tale, nor yet my true love's name. Her name is Catherine Murphy, she dwells in Rogers Lane. And I'm a youth from Carboneer, once loved by her I know. My curse attend this northern man who proved my overthrow. Now to, now to wrap up those painful lines from courting I'll refrain and the rest of my companions likewise should do the same. For in courting there's great jealousy and likewise envy strong which caused my claret blood to flow on Fanny's harbor bond. <laughs> And uh, I did find after I came to St. John's that that's exactly how they looked at Bayman in around here. So. Okay. Um, the next one I'm going to do, uh, it goes by a lot of sort of similar names. Of, in, in, in Leach's uh, book and on the website, it's uh, Bung Your Eye. But uh, I learned it in Branch back in 1976 from a gentleman named Anthony Power. And the thing with Anthony was, I think he had three or four melodies and he just used them for everything, right? <laughs> and so, uh, you, he, he sang this one and he sang many others all to the same melody. And I believe that, uh, I believe it might have been Ryan's Fancy once that heard him do it and, and, they, and they said to Aidan O'Hara, who was there at the time, I've never heard it sung like that before, but that was Anthony for you, right? <laughs> Anthony was a man, he, he, he drove into town with me once from Branch. He was supposed to sing in the folk club that night. And he sang so long. It was such a long ride, especially because the roads were still dirt then. By the time he got to St. John's, he couldn't sing at all. He'd sung himself dry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is his version of John Bungarai. And it's not a very long song. And it's got a little bit of a tail on the end that you might be able to sing with, <coughs> to sing with me. And it goes like this. <clears throat> As I was a walking a fair London street, fair pretty maiden I chanced for to meet. My fair pretty maiden, what have you got there? The finest of liquor that came from the fair. Rally fall little dee, fall the dare who I dee. 
So twenty bright shillings I then counted down. I then picked the basket and staggered along. I staggered along till I came to our ship. Come on, brothers, sailors, we'll all have a tip. Rally fall, little dee, fall the dare I dee. To open the basket was my next intent. To open the basket I was fully bent. I opened the basket and I heard a child cry. Dressed up in the basket was John Bungarai. With a rally fall diddle dee, fall a dare I dee. My shipmates they shouted, they rant and they roared. They never saw a baby in a basket before. Long as the bottom I'm going to try To make a young man out of John Bungarai Rally fall, little dee, fall the day who I dee To get the boy christened was Jack's next intent To get the boy christened he was fully bent He went to the preacher saying, christen my boy what will you call him? He said, John Bungarai. Well, you fall, little D, fall a dare I D. Bungarai said, the preacher, sure, that's a queer name. Jeepers said, Jack, it's a queer way he came. Long as I bought him, I'm going to try to make a young man out of John Bungarai. Well, you fall, little D, fall a dare I D. Come all you young sailors that walk Swindon Street Beware of the damsels you chance for to meet First they will court you and then they will try To make you the daddy of John Bungarai Rally fall, little D, fall a dear O.I.D. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do one now that uh, I'm doing for two reasons. One is because, of course, it's a it's a song or a version from the from the Leech Collection, but it's also an opportunity to uh, kind of give a nod to somebody I've been thinking about a lot lately, who we lost not too long ago. Uh, Baxter Wyrm was a wonderful singer from Pazentia Bay, uh, and a, a, a dear dear family friend, and somebody who whose work as a recitationist, an accordion player, and a singer, and a school teacher, and a uh, you know, and a, a captain of the pilot boat, and, and you know, uh, just a kind of a Pazentia Bay Renaissance man. Um, somebody who I, I, I just really, really, really have always uh, admired, and, uh, and so I have a kind of a, a love for singing songs I got from him now that's stronger than it ever was before, just because uh, he's no longer with us. But uh, I got some great songs from Baxter that I learned from him, partly from him, partly from Mom, partly from Anita, partly from Wilf. There was a bunch of songs that I, I, I had heard them all sing at some point. But I think, I think this one I got from Baxter originally. Um, and uh, it's in the Leech Collection as, as Daniel Monroe, but, it, but I, uh, the version I sing is Donald Monroe. Um, and... Um, it's, uh, <coughs> I've often thought this one would make a, <laughs> make a great short film. <clears throat> bit of a, bit of a, kind of a, 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 you know, kind of a film that plays out in your mind. I always, when I'm singing these songs, I tend to close my eyes and envision, envision what I'm, what I'm singing or what I'm, what I'm hearing. And, uh, and this one really works well for that. Um, <clears throat> Donald Munro. <clears throat> a crowd of young men were in Climb for to roam, to search for employment and pleasure find none. Twas among the bold numbers stood Donald Monroe, and into America he was forced for to go. He left his two sons with their uncle to stay For he was not able their passage to pay The price of their passage, you know it was dear So boys be 
content and stay home in good cheer. Those boys being discontented, being troubled in mind. To stay with their uncle, they were not inclined. They stepped on a voyage to sail o'er the main in hopes for to see their dear father again. They landed in America, took a boy for a guide. To seek out that country where their dear father lied. And together they rambled till they came to a grove where green leaves and branches before them did move. Where two highway robbers lay hid in the wood and pointed their pistols where the two brothers stood. They planted their bullets in their lily white breast and rushed on their victims like savage wild beasts. You hard-hearted monsters, you bloodthirsty hounds, you might not have shot us till the one we had found. We're in search of our father. He's a man we love dear. And we haven't seen him in seven long years. Oh, who is your father? Tell me what is his name? Oh, who is your father? May I know the same. He left us in Scotland seven, twelve months ago. Now perhaps you might know him. His name is Monroe. The old man gazed on them with a tear in his eye. The old man looked on them with a sad, sad surprise. Here's a curse to my pistol for the deed I have done. And curse be my fortune if I've murdered my son. Now who is this young man lies dead by your side? Now who is this young one, the old man he cried? Well, he's my only brother, and he's your youngest son. Now it's cursed be your fortune for the deed you have done. Don't tell our dear mother that we lie in here. It will only upset her and cause her despair. We're in hopes for to see her on a happier shore where you won't be able to shoot us no more.
Thank you. I, lo I love hearing that one song. Yeah. It's one of my favorites, actually. <laughs> and it's one of the ones that we used to listen to a lot when we were kids, me and my brothers. <laughs> and you had a strange upbringing. <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to say, we used to get I stoked. Like <laughs> we used to request this, right? But the problem was that also, because you know we were the <laughs> children of singers and we were surrounded by ballad singers all the time, we, uh, we were trained to fall asleep when we heard a very long song, because when we were little kids, that's how we could put to sleep. So way past the time when it was socially acceptable, at the socially acceptable age when I could fall asleep in public listening to a song. I would still <laughs> fall asleep. I don't think I, I, I've ever heard the end of this, this really long one called The Flying Cloud. Yeah. About, yeah, I don't think I've ever heard the end yeah, of right. The Flying Cloud. You, <laughs> you, you need <laughs> a few years for that one. Right? <laughs> you do as you wake up, it's still happening. Anyway, um, I was going to sing a sad one, but I'll, I'll put it off to later. We can't have two tragedies right in a row. So this is actually... Um, one that's really interesting because you can pinpoint it to the day it happened. So this happened in, this song takes place in May 1935 on Jubilee Day, which was the day to celebrate King George V's uh, silver jubilee on the throne. Um, so in St. Mary's, apparently, they were launching a boat on that particular day and they decided to make a jubilee day of it and they had a big thing and they christened the boat with a bottle of rum and they sent her out into the bay. And somebody wrote a song about it. And I, I love these kind of songs because they always name everybody who is there. And you can always imagine like the old fella sitting around in, in the twine store and somebody, you know, singing it and mentioning the names and, you know, everyone goes, oh, yeah, oh, I know, he was there. And when you listen to some of the recordings on the McEdward Leach website, you can hear a couple of the songs like that, when someone's singing, you can hear someone in the background laughing every time a name gets said, because they're like, oh, that Joe. <laughs> I know all about him. Anyway. What a character. <laughs> yeah, so this one's called uh, the, the Riverhead Launching on Jubilee Day, so it's Riverhead and St. Mary's Day. <clears throat> and uh, um, like Ginny was saying earlier about recycling tunes, um, I think you will probably find the tune of this one familiar. <clears throat> To the river had launching on Jubilee Day Came the men of St. Mary's and all round the bay They came from the Gaskers, Coots Pond and Mall Bay To help Uncle Steve get his craft underway There was Custom House officers, magistrates too They all turned out in style, that new boat to view There was Gunrod Ned and Fat Billy Joe They all joined in the chorus Oh Lord, let her go We had Billy Allen for a shanty man too And all the bay knows just what Billy can do When he sings in the coves in the fall of the year All the gulls from Gull Island comes out for to hear he sang Johnny Coker as we pulled her along And all the boys present was pulling so strong When Mrs. McGraw broke the rum on her bow We all hoved together when Billy said now After some hard heaving she got underway she slipped down the way and right out in the bay She went out so neat, sure to think twas a charm To see her glide out into river at arm We were all so delighted for to see such a thing And we wished her good future, we cheered for the king We cheered for his majesty, lofty and strong and we wished him the future both happy and long. And as for Steve Fagan, to know him you'd wish at 72 still the devil for fish. A right fishing skipper, a loft or a low, to train his three boys, Gus, Leo, and Joe. Now as for Steve's boys, they are very well known And if they were like others, they would stay at home But they fished out of Boston with old Jerry Shea They built their own houses and they paid their own way now, as for Steve's boat, 
road, sure we wish her the best. I know Fagin's building can stand the good test. We'll wish her good luck as the years roll around. Full hatches, fair landing, and a fair holding ground. Here's a health to the boat and a health to her crew. Me song, it is finished, me bottle is too. But we'll be a long time ere we see in the bay such a time as that launching on Jubilee Day. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ellen. Ellen mentioned tragedies. In a row before that, so uh, sends it over to Fergus now. <laughs> Speaking of tragedies, uh, I think it was I think it was Yeats who once said that an Irishman in a good mood is comforted by the fact that there must be a tragedy lurking around the next corner. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Fergus, I'll ask you to do one more now. We'll finish off this uh, this first half of the program, and uh, then we'll take a short break. Uh, you can uh, have a drink. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's wash a washroom over here. It's more on the second floor and uh, some CDs and a couple of books there on the table for you to have a look at as well. So. It's not a tragedy, just another list of names. Oh. <laughs> this time... <laughs> this... Another Riverhead launching, is it? <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is a song, again, that I found this in, in, the, uh, in the collection, uh, collected from uh, Jim James Rice up in Cape Royal. And uh, what it is, is the song that was written uh, uh, sometime around 1911, 1912, Somebody took a walk along the waterfront here and made note of all the boats that were in the harbour uh, that day and made note of all the skippers on the boats as well and some of the mercantile premises involved with those boats. Uh, there's no, it's just a long a list of boats and uh, there's a chorus in it. And so it, the song goes on for quite a bit, so you might get the chorus as we go, okay? I'm going to sure. maybe ask you. Why don't you give them the, give them the chorus? Because I, I was just saying... Yeah. One of the things about this song, I know, in the Leech collection, it's called Ships and Captains. Yep. Yeah. And the only other published version of it I've seen is called Captains and Ships. <laughs> Not sure why that was. Well, it's collected from the same person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where, the North, <laughs> where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale In search of the white coats a day they will sail. That's the chorus. Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale In search of the white coats a day they will sail That's how the chorus goes. From Harvey's I'll start and to Bowering's I'll go I'll name all the ships and the captains also Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale In search of the white coats a day they will sail Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale In search of the white coats a day they will sail in the Ad Captain Doyle, in the Bell Joe B. Nee, in the Bond Captain Parsons, a stout man is he, and jolly gay keen in the spring will command Harvey's port steamer, the old Newfoundland, where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale, in search of the white coats a day they will sail. I'll name all the ships of Joe Brothers and Co. The first and the next one I'll let you all know Of the good ship Diana Joe Blandford has charged I hope he'll come back before long with the surge Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale In search of the white coats a day they will sail in comes the Beothic, so swift and so sure. I hope that George Barber is with her once more. And then there's the Neptune, I see it so plain. And likewise the Eric with pleasant Job Kane. Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale. In search of the white coats, a day they will sail. I wish them good luck and from Job's take my leave. I'll name all the ships owned by Walter Bain Grave. There's a bloodhound gate Windsor, he'll yet make his mark. And Cain in the Iceland across Captain Clark. Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale. In search of the white coats, a day they will sail. 
The brothers also got a fine man for sure. Baxter Barber, who sailed on the ship Labrador. He'll fill her and bring her safe over the seas, as he did when he sailed with the Crosby's Louise. Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale, in search of the white coats a day they will sail. And then it's to Bowerings, the firm that's well known for the pluck, push, and enterprise all they have shown for building that steamer. You all know her well. Abel Kane, her commander, the new Florizel. Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale in search of the white coats, a day they will sail. The kite captain Carroll, we wish him good luck. Once more in the eagle, Joe Kane showed his pluck. And Bartlett the Viking, I pray you will fill. And dear old Dan Green, may he make his big bill. Where the North King is a raging and strong blows the gale. In search of the white coats, a day they will sail. The ranger Sam Windsor be fleetingly seen, likewise Noah Bishop in the Algerine. My song is concluded about captains and ships. May they all come in with big beards on their lips. Where the North King is raging and strong blows the gale, in search of the white coats a day they will sail. Okay, we'll take, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, however long, however long you need. And uh, then uh, Eleanor will be back with you to host the second half. Thank you.